Hi everyone, this is the Apostate Prophet and we will discuss something disgusting together. As many know already, there is always this pedophilia claim about Islam, that Muhammad was a pedophile. It's a bit disturbing in today's world to believe in a religion that was formed by a man who married a six-year-old girl when he was at the age of 50. So people who still want to keep believing in this religion but also find that fact disturbing start to look for um, other excuses, for other explanations, for reinterpretations. I used to do so too when I was a believer. But I came to the conclusion that Aisha, Muhammad's child bride, was six when he married her and she was nine when he consummated the marriage. That's the scholarly consensus. That's the Islamic belief. That's what the majority of Muslims believe in. Here's a story according to the Sunnah. Aisha bint Abu Bakr, or Aisha, was the daughter of Abu Bakr, Muhammad's best friend and the first caliph after Muhammad. When she was at the age of six, she was betrothed to a person called Jubair in Motim. But the betrothal was cancelled when Muhammad intended to marry her. Abu Bakr, her father, was hesitant first because he saw Muhammad as his brother. Later he agreed to the marriage. So Muhammad married her when she was six and consummated the marriage when she was nine. That's when she moved in. Aisha, also known as the mother of the believers, is widely respected in the Sunni Islamic world. For political reasons that occurred in her later life after Muhammad's death, the Shiite Muslim world is not so fond of her, but we won't go into that yet. Let's focus on the actual issue here. Let's look at the excuses and the claims that apologists make. Afterwards, we will look at Islamic sources that tell us that Aisha was just a little child when old Muhammad married her. Excuses, deflections, and untrue claims. First, she was actually 18, because back then, people would start to count the age of children when they reached the age of 9. <laughs> 2. The sources are unclear, and it is open to discussion. She was most probably 12. 3. It was normal back then to marry young girls. Why don't we focus on now? 4. People back then in the climate of Arabia aged much faster, so it was normal. 5. She wanted it, and her parents wanted it too. 6. The hadiths are unreliable and doubted by scholars. 7. Hadiths are just narrations that aren't all true. Only the Quran is holy. Now, these are some excuses and arguments that I uh, see and hear very often from Muslims and from other apologists. I couldn't think of anything else. If you want to add anything, you can do that in the comment section. Now, let's come to the first claim. Do we really need to debunk this? <laughs> Let's go to the second one. <laughs> well, the sources are unclear and it is open to discussion. She was most probably 12. No. The absolute majority agreed that the narrations are true. Only a tiny minority offered interpretations that tell us that she was probably 9, 10 or 12. But those claims are not recognized by the majority, because if a hadith is mentioned both by Bukhari and Muslim, it is almost definitely accepted as truth. The majority of Islamic scholars even accept any hadith that comes from those books, as we have them today. 3. It was normal back then to marry young girls. Why don't we focus on now? Well, maybe. It was normal to make marriages in order to strengthen bonds with other people, with other allies and friends uh, and whatnot. It was probably not such a normal thing to marry such young girls. And this one, Buraira, a companion of Muhammad, says, I cannot accuse her of any defect except that she is still a young girl who sleeps, neglecting her family's dough, which the domestic goats come to eat. Well, the emphasis is on except that she is still a young girl. So it was probably not such a normal thing if we look at this quote. Also, it was normal then, so it's no issue. Well, is Muhammad not the prophet of God? Is he not the perfect human? Is he not the perfect example for Muslims? Doesn't the Quran support him as a perfect example for Muslims multiple times? Does the Quran not say that he is a great person of great moral character and that he is an example for Muslims? There has certainly been for you in the Messenger of Allah an excellent pattern for anyone whose hope is in Allah in the last day and remembers Allah often. Or in this verse, and indeed you are of a great moral character. This is directed to Muhammad himself. Well, of great moral character? Uh, <laughs> no. Let's come to the next point, four. People back then in the climate of Arabia aged much faster, so it was normal. <laughs> Well, we can look at this source, provided by 
the Museum of Menstruation and Women's Health. Uh, they have a list. I can. I will give you the link below in the description. They have a list on um, the average age of the monarchy in history in different regions, and it tells us that in the medieval Middle East, uh, the monarchy, which is uh, a part of the puberty, uh, used to be between the ages 12 and 13, usually on average. Thanks to Wiki Islam for this. We can look at another hadith. This is one hadith that was uh, narrated by Aisha herself when she was already together with Muhammad. Look at what she says. Be very careful. The Prophet was screening me with his ridder, garment covering the upper part of the body, while I was looking at the Ethiopians who were playing in the courtyard of the mosque. I continued watching till I was satisfied. So you may deduce from this event how a little girl who has not reached the age of puberty, who is eager to enjoy amusement, should be treated in this respect. She says that she had not reached the puberty yet, and she was together with Muhammad. Doesn't this tell us everything? This tells us a disgusting truth. Just let this go through your head. He married Aisha when she didn't even have her puberty yet. Can you imagine that? Just imagine, just imagine some old guy today uh, who marries a little young girl who didn't have her puberty yet. Just think about it. And then just switch from that image to Muhammad and think about the religion of Islam again. Point five. She wanted it and her parents wanted it too. Well, that's true. Her father was Abu Bakr, who was one of Muhammad's best friends, and he saw Muhammad as his brother. That's why he hesitated first, as mentioned before. When Muhammad told him that they are only brothers in religion and not in real, so that Aisha is lawful for him, he accepted it. Aisha was still a child. I was saying that we take Aisha's decision to marry him, a six-year-old girl's decision to marry him, as a serious decision. Shall we do the same thing today, according to Islam? Point 6. The Hadiths are unreliable and doubted by scholars. As said, the Hadiths about Aisha's age are accepted by the vast majority of Islamic scholars, and Muslims have been believing the same things for 1,400 years now. They are just as authentic as the same Hadiths that tell the Muslims how to pray five times a day. They share the same source, but many don't even know that. Also, the name of the Hadith books gives it away. I use mostly Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim translations. The word Sahih means authentic, and that's where the Hadiths come from. Let's come to point seven. Hadiths are just narrations that aren't all true. Only the Quran is holy. For well, this one we call Quranists. They are very, very, very rare in the world, but they always talk as if they were the majority of Muslims. Those people don't take other sources like the Hadith, like uh, narrations about Muhammad's life and his companions. They only trust the Quran. They only take the Quran as, as a single holy book of the Islamic faith. They don't believe in other sources. Well, if you take the Quran as the only source of the Islamic faith, then you can't know how you are supposed to pray five times a day because it is not described in the Quran. You need the Hadith for that. That's how Muslims have been praying for the last 1,400 years. And the same sources also tell us that Aisha was six when they married and she was nine when they consummated the marriage. Well, if that's not enough, we can just keep looking at Islamic sources, and here we can find the answer that we need. There are even hadiths that were narrated directly by Aisha. This one tells us that the Prophet Muhammad married her when she was six years old, and he consummated his marriage when she was nine years old, and then she remained with him for nine years until his death. In another hadith, narrated by Aisha herself again, she says, I used to play with dolls in the presence of the Prophet, and my girl friends also used to play with me. When Allah's apostle used to enter, they used to hide themselves, but the Prophet would call them to join and play with me. <laughs> a grown-up, 18-year-old girl plays with dolls? I don't think so. Well, Muhammad was a bit sick, but apparently he covered this whole thing up as a divine mission. This is again narrated by Aisha. According to this hadith, Muhammad said the following words, You were shown to me twice in my dream before I married you. I saw an angel carrying you in a silken piece of cloth. And I said to him, Uncover her. And behold, it was you. I said to myself, If this is from Allah, then it must happen. A divine mission to f uh, marry a little girl.
We even have another source here in which Muhammad gives another companion the advice to marry young girls the way he himself did. This hadith is narrated from the perspective of Jabir, a companion of Muhammad. He said, did you marry a virgin or a matron? I replied, a matron. He said, why didn't you marry a young girl so that you may play with her and she with you? Well, it's very obvious to me. <laughs> Again, the word Sahih means authentic and the vast majority of Sunni Muslim believers believe in these sources. So let's sum this up. Muhammad's wife, Aisha, used to play with dolls. Muhammad was interested in marrying little virgins that he could play with and that would play with him. Aisha herself, in these sources, in these most authentic sources, says that she was six at the marriage and nine at the consummation. And Aisha herself tells us a story about Muhammad letting her watch Ethiopians play in the yard, and the Hadith clearly says that she wasn't in her puberty yet, when they were together. Well, there is not much left to defend about this. That's it. Muhammad married a six-year-old girl and bedded her when she was nine. I shouldn't get in trouble for saying this. Uh, I'm only saying it. Muhammad did it. <laughs> so if you want to call Muhammad the perfect human to ever walk the face of the earth, do so. If you want to follow him and see him as a perfect example, do so. But don't complain when others are disgusted by it and when others criticize it. People go crazy about statutory rape allegations, about depictions, about any talk and image of people having sex with underage girls, especially with little children. We are disgusted by such news today. We demand that people who do such things should be shunned, that they should be harshly punished. Because it is disgusting. While well, the founder of the religion of peace did it, and people are defending it, they are protecting it, they are justifying that. Thank you for watching. Sources are below in the description. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter for updates. I'm very active on Instagram. If you want to support me on Patreon, you can do that. It's very easy. The link to my Patreon account is below in the description. It's totally enough if you just want to support me with $1 or $2 a month. That's nothing. And you can do me a great help so we can make this whole thing bigger together and spread awareness about Islam with your help. Thank you again for watching. We will see each other in another video. And stay away from Islam.